Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Mr. Anderson one more time coming to you with section 9.2.2 talking today about inequalities from our CPM Common Core Algebra E textbook. And we're going to start with some, some modified problems that, uh, uh, that uh, we're pulling from the textbook. And today I'm going to start with uh, 9-56 and we'll review some concepts from our last video. So if you haven't seen the 921 video, please make sure you go back and you address that. In 9-56, um, I've got these things set up so I can show a little bit of work here. And our job is just to do some solving. And um, I'm going to not do all of them, but I'm going to do some that maybe present some interesting ideas. We're going to start with A. Some of these things go very, very quickly. Um, and uh, again, we solve these things like we solve an equation. We are using inverse operations. So our goal is to isolate the variable. In this case, my variable is x. I want to get that thing by itself. So I'm going to use the opposite of subtracting 7, which is adding 7 to both sides of my inequality, and I get x is less than, in this case, 5. Now, x is by itself. In this case, I have identified that boundary point. I can do some graphing. So some of our number lines, no kidding, are this simple. We put 0 on there for reference. We put and label the boundary point on there, and we throw that boundary point in, make sure it's appropriate. It is a less than inequality, so I know my boundary point my boundary dot, sorry, should be open, and I do need to shade less than, which is indicating that I want to shade that direction, okay? So we'll go that route, shade that way, and I do have an arrow indicating that my shading does continue. All right, if we move on to something a little bit more complex, like letter B, all right, I've got variables on both sides. I've got numbers on both sides. It's going to be a little bit longer of a problem, but still very doable using everything we've talked about. I like to have my variables on the left, so I'm going to solve with that in mind. If you like a different method, there's nothing wrong with that. Go ahead with that, okay? But I'm going to start by subtracting two from both sides, and I'm stacking the like terms, Okay, so here they cancel, and here they're going to line up. Negative 8 and negative 2, those are my like terms. So those will make negative 10. I've got 8m. I keep that inequality symbol the same because I have not divided by a negative yet. All right, but now I'm going to go ahead and move that 8m to the left-hand side. It is positive, so I will subtract it from here. I will subtract it from here. Okay, they cancel here. I'm left with negative 10 less than or equal to, and then 3 minus 8 is negative 5m. Okay, now here's that situation that we visited yesterday, where we are going to divide to get the m by itself, but look what I'm dividing by. That division by a negative, as we discussed, causes us to need to flip the inequality symbol. Okay, and remember, the point for that was the solutions then reveal themselves on the opposite side of that boundary point. So, and, and again, if you haven't seen that 921 video, that's where we break that whole thing down. Go ahead and check that out. These cancel. I get M is flip the sign greater than or equal to 2. So there's my boundary point. I draw that number line. I've got 0 in there for reference. I've got 2 in there where the boundary goes. I've got arrows on the ends of that number line. I draw in the appropriate dot. In this case, it is a shaded dot. And then we want greater than or equal to. Ta-da! There we go. Okay? A couple very, very interesting problems that reveal themselves are things in E and F. So let's tackle E first, and we're going to talk about what's up with that. Um, far more complex. Let's combine some like terms to get started. I'm putting the, the negative 4 and the 1 together to get negative 3. I've got to put the 2 and the 7 together to get 9. And then, ta-da, right? Now look at what's happening, okay? I recognize right away, and you can do the algebra to confirm this, but I recognize right away what I have over here matches exactly over here. Okay, and what that's telling me is that no matter what I plug in for k, it is going to be a solution. So in this particular case, like I said, you could add 3 to both sides if you wanted. They cancel, and you get 9k is less than or equal to 9k, and then you could subtract 9k from both sides, and they cancel, and you get 0 is less than or equal to 0. That is true, and what that's telling you is no matter what you plugged in for k, you would have any number be a solution. So in this particular case, we say all reals are a solution. Okay, and if you want to draw that on your number line, here I'm going to have to use a highlighter for shading. You can put zero in there, but you would then need to shade the entire number line because every single value on there would be a plausible solution. Okay, another <clears throat> interesting scenario 
occurs when we talk about letter F. Okay, you're going to see something very, very similar happen. Now, here's why. I recognize from the get when I say 3y minus 1 is less than 3y mi three minus 1. I recognize that this and this match. So, right away, I know that when I subtract 1 from both sides, the 1s are going to cancel. When I subtract 3 from both sides, the 3y's are going to cancel. I'm going to be left with this and that again. 0 is less than 0. And, and you might be like going back and saying, well, Anderson, um, in E, that was all real solutions. Well, let's look at why. Because of this or equal to piece. 0 is less than or equal to 0. Take out the lesson part. 0 equals 0. That's 100% true. But if I go back here and I say 0 is less than 0, it's not true. So this is that case where we would have the situation where we have no, oops, no solutions. Okay, no solutions are, are, are possible there. It's not the case where zero is less than zero. And so if I was going to draw a number line here, this is how uninteresting my number line would look. I, I can't do any boundary points or shading because I've got nothing. Okay, there's, there's no real solutions there. Okay, so there's a little bit of exposure, a little bit of a reminder for what some of the inequality solving procedures. I didn't do C or D. I challenge you to uh, to try those things. You are going to be able to find a boundary point and a um, uh, be able to make a number line uh, for those problems. I'm going to move on. I've included 57. If we have time, I'm going to come back to it. But I'm going to move on to 58. Okay, and it says, and I read, in 1912, Japan gave the U.S., Several thousand flowering cherry trees as a symbol of friendship. Similarly, the nation of Cameroon plans to give flowering sada trees to other countries this year. When asked how to decide which sada trees make good gifts, Cameroon's chief arborist, an arborist is somebody who cares for trees, explained, We plant sada trees when they are six centimeters tall and they grow nine centimeters every year. The trees only flower when they are taller than 150 centimeters. Okay, so they plant them when they are six centimeters tall. There's my starting height. And here is their growth rate, right? I'm throwing in terms from our unit on linear functions, okay? And the trees only flower when they are taller than 150. It doesn't say when they are 150. It says when they're taller. So we're going to explore that in a little bit. It is very important that the trees um, Cameroon gives flowers this year. It would be considered an insult to receive a tree that did not bloom. Luckily, Cameroon has many groves of sada trees from which to select its gifts. How old must the trees be so that they will flower within a year? Okay, part A. Important discussion here says, discuss with your study team whether an inequality or an equation is appropriate for this situation. Be prepared to share your reasoning. Now, we don't have study teams because you're watching this video, right? And because you're watching this video, we kind of have to talk about it with me, okay? Um, in this particular case, I'm going to invite you to look back at the word taller than, or words taller than. It does not say equal to. It doesn't say when it is 150 centimeters. Those are like definite like boundary, not boundary, I don't want to say boundary. Uh, those are definite, like equal to values. I don't have that here. It says taller than that. What if it's 150? That's taller than one, one. Uh, what if it's 151? That's taller than 150. What if it's 160? That's taller than 150. So what we're seeing is a situation where we have many possible options that would satisfy this. So because this is the case, an inequality is going to be appropriate. An equation is not going to be my best bet here. Okay, so let's keep that in mind, right? It says write and solve a mathematical sentence to determine how old trees can be so that they flower this year. Well, if I'm going to go ahead for the purposes of our work today, I'm going to let X equal the age of the Sada trees, TTA. Okay, just so we know what that variable is, then I already identified my starting height. That's our y-intercept. So my starting height is going to be 6. And then we also identified the growth rate. Up, back up, and you guys can see they grow 9 centimeters every year. We multiply the growth rate by the age. So in this case, it's going to be 9 times the age of the tree. And because that's added to the starting height, right, it makes sense to add there. Because when they're growing 9 centimeters, we don't subtract the starting height for that. We take that starting height and the growth is on top of that. And we want that to be taller than 150. So I know in this particular case, 
150 is going to be over here on the other side of my inequality symbol. But what does taller than mean? Here's where context is going to help me really identify what kind of symbol I need. Okay. Taller than means greater than. Okay. So I'm going to go throw this in there, but does it say, or should it be greater than or equal to? Well, in order to answer that, I need to reinvestigate. Does it imply 150 is a solution or could be a solution? And here it does not. Here it just says taller than. So I know 150 cannot be a solution. So I'm going to leave this as simply a greater than in equality. Okay. Now it does say to write it. I think we've done that. Okay. And now we are going to go ahead and solve this. I'm going to go ahead and subtract six from both sides. Okay. Those cancel. I get nine X is greater than 150 minus six is 144. Okay. I am going to be isolating that X. I want to get X by itself. So I know how old those trees need to be. So I'll divide by nine because it's nine times X. And we undo multiplication with division. These cancel. And I get X is greater than 16. Okay. And um, it says, you know, you know we, we should take this, this answer. We should put it in context. What does this mean? The trees should be Okay, right? The tree should be 16 years old. If I say that, I'm going to be honest with you, that's not correct. Okay, because that's not what this says. It doesn't say x equals 16, because that's what this sentence would say. All right, this says x equals 16, but it's not that case. The tree should be more than or greater than. And sometimes that inequality language might be escaping us when we have to apply context. Like here, I needed context because we were talking about these trees that the, the country of Cameroon was going to be delivering as an international gift. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, make sure we're adjusting some of our language when communicating. That's important. Make sure we're remembering these rules for solving inequality because even though they're mostly the same, there are some subtle differences that we need to include in order to be correct. And finally, I've got a tiny bit of review preview here at the bottom. Um, and these are things we're going to invite you guys to try, see what questions arise, and then go ahead and ask those questions. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.